All right, guys, in this video, I want to talk about and we're going to build a device for simple RF power measurement. This article is from the June 2001 QST magazine. And if you're an ARRL member, you can log into the site and download this exact article from their archives. It may be republished elsewhere. Um, it's a great article. It's very interesting. And uh, in this article, they talk about building an RF power tap. That's this uh, small device here in the, the center of the screen. And then they also talk about building a power meter to use with your tap. In this video, we're not going to explore doing the power meter. Um, potentially, that's something we're going to do down the road. That would be an interesting build as well. But today, we're talking about doing a power tap. And what we can do with a power tap or RF tap is take measurements of radio energy output from a device. So from your HT, your Baofeng at 1 watt or 5 watts, or your Kenwood D74 or your Yesu or whatever. Or you can hook this up to your HF radio. So moving on, the article talks about the two things, the power meter, which is the schematic here, shown here. And then it talks about, and I'm scrolling down, it talks about the RF tap. And the RF tap is pretty straightforward. Uh, here, where the blue line is thoughtfully highlighting for us, we have RF input listed. J1 and RF output J2. These are in the article N type connectors. I'm using SO239s. Um, you could use BNC or, or whatever you want to use, but I'm using SO239s. The resistors R1A, 1B, and 1C are 820 ohm uh, resistors, quarter watt. Instead of using that, I decided to get froggy. And I'm using a single, um, I believe, a half or one watt, 3,000 ohm, 3K ohm resistor in place of those three resistors. Um, that Those three resistors are in series. They go across to our power meter connector, J3, and then crossed over between the center pin of the J3 connector and shield is a single 50 ohm resistor. In my case, I had a 47 ohm. That's what I have. That's what I used. Close enough for a ham. Um, and as you can see in the diagram, shield on all of these is the case. Now, their project case is different than the one I used, and I'll explain that in a second. The other thing I wanted to mention is they show a capacitor C here listed. Um, what they ended up doing for the capacitor is putting a piece of shielded wire here, and it's open. There is not a direct connection to the other side of R1A. So this wire comes off of this side of the resistor and is um, literally hanging in space very close to R1A. This is a resistive tap. There are other kinds of taps, um, specifically inductive tap, which is similar to the cell wave um, that I've shown on a previous video. And I believe temporarily offline and smoke and ape have done videos on the cell wave as well maybe ham radio dude i can't remember who all has done one but that is an inductive tap this is a resistive tap so they have um of course a parts list of what they used and um i tried to follow that i had a few issues as you'll see when i show you my project but uh, we'll get to that in a minute the device is pretty straightforward the two connectors are fastened on either side of the project box the center pins are connected uh, to the brass plate and then the resistors in series and the special C1 wire. And literally it is a wire. If you read the um, caption below the picture here, it mentions that it's a piece of 22 gauge hookup wire. Um, and as you can see, it's just soldered to the brass plate and hanging in space. Uh, important to note that other end is not touching anything it is just there so the three resistors go to the center pin of the bnc connector and then there is the 47 in my case ohm resistor r2 that is across the center pin of the bnc to the shield of the device which in this case is the case device and that's it it's um 
it's not a lot to build. Literally, the hardest part of this project was drilling holes and lining the holes up for the connectors. Um, what you will not see in this video is the horrible, horrible mess I made of trying to drill my project box like this and get those holes lined up where I could get the connectors in the in the case and where the screws would line up. And it just I gave up on that and ended up having to punt. And I used a metal electrical junction box. So um, I made a few other design changes, as you'll see. But that's what we're going to put together. So without further ado, let's jump to the build. So I've got the pieces assembled for our project. Here is the brass strip. I've got a few words to say about that. We'll come back to him in a second. Here's our project box. This is uh, die cast aluminum, fairly sturdy. It has a little bag with the screws for the, for the uh, posts inside. And the lid fits flush like that. So that's excellent. Um, here's our connectors. Like I said, I'm going to use two SO239s. These will be mounted on the sides of the box. And then here is a BNC and I'm going to put him on the end and this will be our, our, uh, our tap port down there. Now I'm going to vary from the official design documents just a little bit. And I haven't decided which I'm going to do. I'll probably end up doing all three, but for now, Here's what I wanted to say. I have uh, 47 ohm and 820 ohm resistors right here. And this would follow the same design that's in the document close enough for ham work, right? I don't have a 50 ohm resistor, but I've got 47s close enough. And I do have 820 ohm resistors. So I could use three of these and then one of these for the, uh, the, uh, impedance match at the end. Still going to use that. However, 3 times 820 in series is 2460. So what I'm thinking is we have a 1K and I have some 3Ks. And I have I have a whole stack of other resistors um, that I could stash and come up with all sorts of random numbers. But what I believe I'm going to set this up with is a single 3K resistor. I don't know specifically that that's going to make a difference in the overall design. It should change the attenuation. It may be a little greater than minus 40 dB. But as far as I understand this, there's no significant difference between having one 3K ohm resistor and three 820 ohm resistors, except I'm adding a little more resistance. Being that this is going to the tap end, right? More should be better. Uh, uh, 600 ohms one way or the other should not matter as long as we get some reasonable amount of signal less than our original input signal. So that is my plan is to build it with with one of these um, and then one obviously 147k ohm resistor. Now <clears throat> Um, I'm not going to show all the build process because it's drilling holes and soldering stuff. And yeah, if you've been a ham for more than a couple of weeks, you've probably drilled and soldered stuff. So what I'm going to do is get this all uh, put together uh, off camera uh, for the most part. And then um, and then we'll go from there. OK, I've decided to drop back and punt. I screwed up two boxes already because the tolerance between the top and the bottom is just, just a little too small for this to comfortably get in there. I had it just a little too low and I couldn't get the connector in. I had it just a little too high and then this sat over the top of the lid and I would have to dremel a bunch off and I didn't want to do that. For now, we're going to go full white trash box. Uh, this is an electrical junction box. Unfortunately, the knockout holes are too big for the BNC connector. They're not a bad size for the SO239. They would work, but it's easier just to leave them in. And I can't really drill through the knockouts successfully. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this up like this here. So we have 
our pass through will be right here across the top and then our tap will be down here on the bottom and I, i'd like to put it dead center on the bottom but again that's a knockout right there as you can see so that wouldn't work because i'd have to drill through the knockout and i'd probably knock it out in the process so what we're going to do is is set it up like this and we have a lid to go on it and uh it'll be it'll be ghetto fabulous so that's the plan i'm um going to find the screws and drill some holes and mount these connectors and then the next thing we're going to do is take our brass piece and get it um, fastened together to fit all this stuff um, since the size is different from the plan that i showed you we're going to have to improvise adapt and overcome on that as well that's fine did a little prelim on the brass so what i did is i sanded a good bit of it down with 120 grit and then i have laid down a coat of flux on it so i'm hoping that i uh, can get it soldered fairly easily and before i start working on it in here i'm going to pre-tin the spots where everything connects to and get a good wad of solder on there already so i can do that without having to try and hold the soldering iron in the connector and i don't want to melt connector ends so let me get that set up we'll be right back okay so i took some liberties with the design obviously since I'm not using that little tiny box so here's our brass strip this hooks the center conductor of our SO 239s together the grounds or the shield rather on all of these connectors is tied to the case that's how this design is made there's not a separate wire for the shields here is our this is a 3k ohm resistor as opposed to three 820 ohm resistors I just used a 3k and you should be able to just barely see it there's a little wire right there that is the C capacitor wire that uh, they talked about in the diagram and then there is our 47 ohm resistor and it's soldered between the center pin and the shield on the BNC side so that is it that's the device I am going to uh, get the lid on it and then we're going to go test it out on the spectrum analyzer. All right, so this is our test setup. Here we have the cell wave. This is an inductive tap as well as a dummy load. I'm only using the dummy load portion of it to run our signal through. Here we have our new RF tap we made. This is hooked up from the tracking generator of the spectrum analyzer out to the dummy load this is our through connection full power goes out here then here is our BNC connector and this is going to the input of the spectrum analyzer and I've set up the tracking generator and normalized it to uh, 30 dB and you which is one watt and you can see what our signal looks like and we are down at about minus 40 db okay so i've got the frequency range set from zero to 500 and you can see here down on the lower end this is absolutely giving us um, actually a little better than 40 db and for whatever reason it eases up as we go up to 500 megahertz so each of these blocks is 50 megahertz there's 10 blocks we've got a 500 megahertz range up here so you can see right around 150 megahertz, it starts easing up. And by the time we get to, um, let's see, 100, 200, 300, 350, by the time we get to about 350, we're at uh, minus 30 dB. So not so great for um, UHF range, really but uh, it looks really solid for anything certainly in HF and VHF range. And let's change our frequencies and let's change our stop and let's set that to 50 megahertz. And our start is still zero. So you can see there that at the HF frequencies, this thing is really solid uh, minus 40 dB, just absolutely spot on. So that's um, kind of what we're looking for. Uh, this is rated for 100 watts, so you could theoretically hook up your HF set to it and test on the tap on the output side of your HF set. If you do that, and 
if you smoke your nano VNA or your tiny SA, or God forbid your oscilloscope or spectrum analyzer, please do not call me. I'm not going to do that. You can do it, theoretically. I'm not going to do it. This is not a piece of lab test gear. This is something we made out of a magazine article from 20 years ago. I'm going to stick with the lab gear for doing the, the high power stuff. Anyway, so there you go. Now, I'm going to stop the camera. I'm going to change out and hook up a Baofeng, and we'll take a look at it real quick, and that'll wrap this up. Okay, I've removed the tracking generator from our setup and now our tap is going from my Baofeng UV6R uh, through our tap to the cell wave dummy load over here. And then of course I have our RF tap hooked up to the input of our spectrum analyzer. So I'm set on 146.52 and I changed the range on the spectrum analyzer to a center frequency of 146 and if we key up you'll see that looks like that's about minus 8 dB of signal this radio is set on 1 watt that would be 30 dB if I'm showing minus 8 that's about 38 dB down which is in the in the gravy zone of where we want to be so let me change and turn on a marker for us and then set it to our peak and looks like our peak is about 7, minus 7 dB at 146.75 that's where the peak of the signal is <clears throat> so uh, not bad now let's try and do this let us change out on amplitude let's change our units to from dbm to watts let's transmit again and change back to marker and there you go and so you can see our output is um, 193 microwatts so between those two measurements, we are about 40 dB down from the primary output signal. Again, 1 watt, 30 dB. Minus 40 would put us at minus 10 dB. I've got minus 7, so we're in the, we're in the butter zone for this. There were design changes you saw in how I did the device. Those design changes may have, and indeed probably does have, some effect on the efficaciousness of how well this thing does its thing. Um, I'll probably go back and, and tweak this again and, um, and maybe do it in a correct project box um, and more closer to the way they described in the article, but I'm, uh, I'm perfectly happy with these results. As far as I'm concerned, this is very successful. So anyway, guys, that is all I have for you today from wonderful downtown Pintlala, Alabama in FEP Labs. Y'all, 73s, have a great day. Thanks for watching.